Yeah! Look what I did yesterday. Half my lights were out on my dash. Had like from probably the right hand side of the speedometer over all these lights went out. So on my last truck, my GMC 1500, I bought what's called a light kit with a stepper kit. The steppers um, the stepper motors are what goes in there behind each one of your needles that make the needles go, make your gauges work. Well, none of mine were broken, so this time I just did the needles, um, or I just did the lights, and I did LED. So all you do is you take a solder gun, and you hit the two prongs in the back to melt the solder off, pull the light off, put the new one on, solder it on, you're done. But I was screwing around in Ryan's garage yesterday, and he said, here, let me do it. So... I let him do it and he put all new LEDs in here and it's working great and they're blue light I love them so this morning I have to go get gas because I'm really low on gas and I have to go put plow markers up in a driveway what else I gotta do I have to go to my father-in-law's to use his lift to put my truck up on the lift where Ryan is meeting me there so we can figure out what is clunking under my truck. Um, because I've had this clunking noise going on and I know that there's stuff that I needed to address on this truck. There were things that had to be done. So I just figured, you know what, I'm gonna get these things done and it'll take away this clunking noise that I have. Part of those things were I needed uh, control arm, like A-arm bushings. Um, those were dry rotted and shot in the front. I needed upper and lower ball joints, both sides in the front. Those were, you know, getting kind of bad. They weren't. Only one of them was actually shot. The other three were just getting bad. So got all those changed out. And I'm still getting this clunk. Like it used to be I could just drive down the road slow and I just tap on the gas and go clunk 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 like a motor mount or like a body mount or something. So um, I did find out that the training mount bolts backed out. Um, not all the way, just a few turns. So we tightened them up and it seemed to take care of it to the point where only when I put the truck in reverse and back up it'll go click clunk click clunk like it didn't shift the truck like it didn't it was just the noise click clunk click clunk um so i have no idea what the hell is causing it i thought it was a body mount or a motor mount um i had a friend of mine doing the ball joints and the control arm bushings and he said that he checked the motor mounts and they were all fine he doesn't know what it is he checked everything but ryan and i are going to go through everything this morning we're going to check it we're going to see if we can find out exactly what the hell's making the noise and then uh because I need to get this truck undercoated and I need to get it done before all the snow really starts flying, which is usually by now I'm running late on that. And uh, yeah, so I need to get that done. Um, but I really want to see if there's something I need to crawl into the truck and fix before I go spray the whole thing with undercoating.
So it looks like there was already some plow markers in that driveway, but the guy that usually plows that driveway got really sick and he's been in the hospital. So um, he's a friend of mine. He's been calling all of his contracts, telling them that he's not gonna be able to plow this year and he's returning their money, which really sucks. That's a horrible thing for him. But um, Ryan has taken over a couple of his driveways. That's the only one that I've gotten a call for for his driveways, but I guess he's referring uh, the bulk of them to me and Ryan. So. I really wasn't planning on taking on any more driveways this year, but ones like that where I have a few of them right there next to it, it's kind of foolish to not take it. So um, so I picked that one up and I'll do the same if I get more calls for driveways that are right near ones that I already do, because why not? <laughs> Look everybody, we're back to the dually again. Here she sits in old Roscoe's garage once again. I'll do a really quick recap for anybody that doesn't know, but there's videos on this where I've gone over everything. What it was doing was this year, 2020, the first week of the season, I ran around doing uh, plow damage, fixing topsoil, and it started spitting and sputtering, and then it wouldn't go anywhere when I hit the gas. I limped it home, got home, changed the fuel filter out on it, ran great. Drove it for about two weeks after that, uh, almost every day, and then I was driving my second day of mowing for the season, and it started backfiring, puffing white smoke, and it just kept shutting off. It wouldn't stay running. So since then, it's been in three different garages. This is not including this one. Three different garages, people have gone through everything. So let me show you between the three garages and between what Ryan and I have done, everything that's been done to this. So it has a new distributor, new rotor, new ignition module, um, new, um, new ignition solenoid. It has new plugs, coil. new wires, coil, new map sensor. It has a new EGR valve, a new air idle control valve, a new throttle position sensor. Um, <laughs> today I went through and checked all the grounds, made sure everything was grounded correctly. It has a new PCV valve. Um, we ripped all of the vacuum lines off and redid all brand new vacuum lines. It has a new battery. Yesterday, Ryan and I put a uh, double roller timing chain and timing gears in it. That's all new. Um, it has a new computer in it. It has a new throttle body gasket in it. Um, a new brand new Delphi fuel pump. Another new fuel filter. Um, um, new exhaust manifolds. And because the oil dipstick tube was leaking, um, we put a new dipstick oil tube in it. Uh, brand new battery. I think I already said that. Um, new serpentine belt, new air filter, just all the basic tune-up stuff. Um, oh, we rebuilt the um, fuel pressure. What, what the heck is that called? I'm forgetting stuff. The fuel regulator. We rebuilt the fuel regulator with new spring and new rubber gasket in there. It's like a diaphragm. Um, that has been rebuilt. Um, I don't know what else. That might be it. It's gone through everything. Oh, a new O2 sensor. It only has one in this truck. Um, I think that might be everything. But that is everything that we've gone through, and it still has the same problem. Now, I know it sounds like we're just throwing money and throwing parts at this, but we've talked to many, many mechanics along the way, including all the stuff that Ryan and I know how to do, and... Every single thing that we've mentioned has all been, everyone says, well, this can relate to that. This can relate to that. So we did one thing at a time and it still hasn't solved it. The problem it has is you can start it up and it'll run smooth as can be. I can rev it up smooth, no hiccups, no nothing. Soon as you drop it down into gear, it bogs right down and wants to shut right off. Or if you're driving down the road and you come up to a stop sign or a red light and you're sitting there in gear, it wants to shut off. Sometimes it does shut off. I double foot it, I can keep it running. That's the problem it's having. So 
I don't know. The only thing that we haven't done is change the actual distributor itself, which we have one. We just haven't gotten to that yet. But other than that, I believe we've done everything to this engine that would cause that type of situation. Uh, <clears throat> we did find something online that says um, that there is a plunger um, about four inches long with a spring on it that goes um, once you drop the tranny pan and tranny filter, it goes up inside there and it's for the torque converter. Um, they say that that can cause this issue too. But other than the distributor and that, those are the only two things we have not done yet. So this is where we're at. The story of the saga, the saga of the dually continues. So here's the deal. We spent over a week working on this dually again. And uh, yeah. We're, I don't think we're any further ahead than we were before we started, but it definitely did need the timing chain, which Ryan has been saying for months that it needs. Um, he was 100% right about that. Um, here, let me show you. I, we filmed a small little clip on my phone of the timing chain when we took the cover off. Look how much play is in this timing chain. If you guys know anything about timing chains, um, it's not supposed to be like this at all. So check out this little clip right here of the timing chain. Okay, I'm videoing. Yeah, I'd say that chain's shot. That thing's freaking loose as hell. That timing chain's shot. As you can see, that thing was screwed. Um, it was definitely way too loose. It should not be like that. We did end up changing so now what we've done I mean if you guys if you guys go back through the videos I think one was titled like the saga of the dually continues or whatever and I've gone through everything that I have done to this and that other shops have done to this thing to try to get it right and uh, so since then since it's been a Ryan shop what we've done is we changed the oil pressure switch because in those uh, TBI's like that throttle body injection motors and 454's if the oil pressure switch goes bad it'll sh it'll tell the fuel pump to shut off I don't know why it's like that but it does so we changed that out um, I changed the fuel pump three times because the new fuel pump that I put in it just wasn't giving enough pressure I changed the fuel pump setting unit everything um, and it just wasn't giving it enough pressure so um, I, we pulled the whole setting unit out and I went and got a new fuel pump well, We installed that, put it all back together. Turns out they gave me the wrong fuel pump, so it was blowing way too much pressure. And uh, so I looked it up and I got one that's dialed in for the exact um, flow rate that it's supposed to be. And we put that one in and we checked the fuel pressure. And it seems the fuel pressure is right now, but when I went to screw the line back into the regulator on the back of the throttle body, I cross-threaded it and I screwed up the whole regulator, which I've been to junkyards, and you can't even get throttle bodies for those things anymore. Um, there's places that list them online, and they say they're like 300 bucks, or like six weeks out, and that's if they can even manage to find one to get it for you. So it's just a nightmare. I did find a guy on eBay that sells the entire regulator, top half and bottom half. Bottom half is where those lines screw into. And uh, so he's gonna ship it to me with the new line fittings and everything. So that's the next step but um, we can't get it timed we put a new distributor into it um, and we did the time of chain and timing gears obviously but we can't get it timed until we can get it to stay running and the problem is it'll start up and it runs for a couple seconds and it shuts right off now here's the other weird part about it when I had the line screwed in to the back of the regulator and it was uh, and everything was fine before I'd cross thread them everything was fine it would start up and it would run for a couple seconds and shut right off but once I cross threaded those lines and we put it back together um, it would start up and it would run for like 10 seconds and then shut off and that is with the fuel spraying out the back of the regulator with it having a leak that's when it ran the longest really weird so um, that started to make me think there's something wrong with that regulator so hopefully replacing this regulator when it comes in in the next couple of days will fix it I don't know um, but I thought maybe we had a vacuum leak so I ripped all the vacuum lines out of it replaced it with all new vacuum lines um, 
We've done everything. We've done everything you could possibly think of. We know the firing order is spot on. Um, everything's brand new. There's really nothing to change. There's nothing left to change on that engine that we haven't already changed that would relate to the vehicle shutting off. And the problem I was having before is um, initially you'd start it up and uh, it would idle perfectly fine. You rev it up, it's perfectly fine. As soon as you put it in gear, the truck would shut off. And that's been the problem all along. But now it's at the point where you start it up and it runs for a few seconds and just shuts off. It won't even stay running. So, and I don't know, it's getting worse if, if anything, I would think. But it's getting down to the point where I have to make a decision. I love that truck. Uh, we just painted it last year. We built a custom bed on it, six new tires on it, and then everything on the engine is freaking new. Um, you know, and everything. There's nothing we haven't replaced. We've even done the exhaust and the O2 sensor. There's only one on it. There's nothing we haven't done. So I have no idea what else the problem can be on that truck. And neither does anybody else. Every master mechanic I've talked to, every mechanic that runs a shop, every mechanic that owns a shop, every single one of them says, I would have done every single thing that you have done already. Those would be those would be all the common things that would fix the issue you're having and none of them have fixed it so there's definitely a gremlin in that motor somewhere that i'm chasing that i haven't been able to find but i'm now up to the point where i've dumped like 3500 bucks in parts into that thing um, thank god i haven't had to pay a shop to do it all i mean i did pay a couple shops three different shops that the truck has been and i've paid them small amounts of money for the small things that they did to it to try to fix it but overall um the biggest bulk has been on me and ryan as far as the work goes so i don't know i just i'm out of ideas if i get this new regulator in um that comes with new fuel injectors in it if i put this in now that we have the correct pressure fuel pump installed um once i get all this in in the next couple days when the new fuel regulator comes in if this doesn't fix it i don't know i'm out of ideas and so is everybody else so um it, at that point, I think it might just be decision time of whether just get rid of this truck. And there's no way in hell I'll get anywhere near what I put into this truck. So um, just, I guess, at that point, I just got to sell it for whatever the most is I can get out of it and just move on from there and buy something else. So I don't know. It's just, it really sucks because I really, really like this truck a lot. And for five years, four or five years, this truck has done nothing but make me money. I haven't had to put a dime into it other than the occasional brakes, you know, and then oil changes, tune ups. Other than that, I haven't had to put a single thing into this truck. Um, it's just been stuff I wanted to do. Like we painted the entire body in that Raptor liner and new body panels and, uh, and then building that bed. That's all stuff I wanted to do to it. It wasn't stuff I had to do. So, but. You know, other than that, I, I just absolutely love the truck and I really don't want to get rid of it, but how long do you go? Where's the cutoff point? And it, I just keep thinking I'm this far into it. You know, I can't turn back now, but you know, if there's no answer in sight and it's usually Ryan and I can figure out anything, we can fix anything, but we're at the point where we can't and everybody we know that knows more stuff than we do, they can't either. So what do you do? Make sure you hit the subscribe button, bobby button, leave a thumbs up and comment if you want to. You don't have to, but if you want to, you can. We'll see you in the next one.